Hey up everyone and welcome back and if you're new here then welcome to my channel. My name's Tony Marie Hudson, I'm a pet portrait artist and I post tutorials and time lapses and that kind of thing so if you're new and that interests you then uh, be sure to like and subscribe to keep up with all my further uploads. So today we have this painting time lapse, it's a montage featuring a Pyrenean sheepdog called Jet. It's A2 size, which is uh, an ISO standard international paper size, but people in USA don't tend to be familiar with these ISO paper sizes. So that would translate to about 16 and a half inches and 23.38 of an inch in size. It's painted using acrylic on Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper at £300. And the acrylics were mostly Windsor and Newton with some Liquitex and what have you mixed in as well. Because I'm right handed I always start on left hand side at painting first so I'm not leaning on areas that I've already painted with my hand. And this first study is in the top left hand corner and it features Jet doing an agility jump. He was an agility dog, he passed away earlier this year so this is a, a memorial tribute to him. And his owner's parents had this done for him as a gift for his birthday. This is the second painting that I've had done by these particular clients. The other one I did a few years ago and it were a large painting than this. It were 30 by 22 I think and it had got three dogs in it. Two Border Collies and a, another Pyrenean Sheep Dog. I think the two Border Collies have passed away now but I'm not sure if they've still got the Pyrenean Sheep Dog. the second study where he's just chilling in grass just sitting there they wanted a mixture of just his everyday of life and also his agility career so we've got a, an head study and then we've got a couple of agility studies and then just a couple of chilling out on a walk kind of studies just to try and illustrate different aspects of his life and his personality and what have you a lot of people might not be so familiar with the Pyrenean sheepdog breed I must admit, before I started doing agility, I weren't really familiar with these dogs, but they did get quite popular on agility scenes, so that's why I do meet quite a few of these dogs around. I think people are more familiar with the much larger livestock guardian counterpart, which is the Pyrenean mountain dog. A lot of people seem to be familiar with them, but Pyrenean sheep dogs are not a livestock guardian dog, they're a, a herding breed, so... They're a much smaller breed than your Pyrenean mountain dogs, which are ginormous. Pyrenean sheep dogs are more sort of like a medium size, probably on average a little bit smaller than your average collie. But I think Jet would have would have been around about collie kind of size. I think because he's jumping large in his photos, then obviously he had to be around about collie size in order to be jumping large. I don't really know that much about them, but I do know they come in a couple of different coat types. You get your shorter coated variety, and then you get your longer coated variety, like Jet here. And sometimes you get them with actual dreadlocks in the fur as well. I've got a friend with one that's got dreadlocks, only on his back end area. But yeah, I had a, I had a feel of them uh, recently when I met her to show how oh, like I need to feel these dreadlocks. <laughs> and they're actually quite soft. But yeah, it gets a lot of comments, people asking about them dreadlocks. But yeah, apparently it's, uh, it's a thing for Pyrenean sheep dogs to have them. But you don't see that many dogs that have got them. That's the only dog that I know of that belongs to that friend that actually has the dreadlocks. Well, it's kind of like a corded coat like you get on your poolies and your common doors and what have you, but you know what I mean, I just call them dreadlocks because they look like dreadlocks. I'm 
now working on the main ed study. Now, some of you might remember the previous montage I posted a couple of months or so ago of Riley the Border Collie, who I painted early this year. And the reference photo for his ed study was like really poor, so I only did it really small in the middle of the actual montage. But the photo for this one is quite the opposite the reference photo it was taken by a photographer friend of mine and I asked her if it were okay to use it as a reference and it were a nice studio shot with good lighting and everything and it were actually absolutely perfect really as a reference so I were able to do the head study here a, a lot bigger so it, it had a more dominant position in painting compared to O'Reilly and I'm able to add a lot more detail into this and really get stuck into the, the fine textures and things like that going on compared to Riley. There's a lot of sheen on uh, Jet's coat in this, in, well, in the reference photo, so obviously I were able to include it in painting. And I've been thinking about doing another tutorial for long black fur because this fur is a little bit different to the last black fur tutorial I did that featured a border collie and I just worked on the, the dog's face. So I could do a, another tutorial using the fur on this, like on his chest where it's quite a bit longer as well. So if anybody wants to see that then let me know and I'll make a bit of a tutorial out of it. I find a lot of people say that black dogs are most difficult for them to do but for me they're probably the easiest. So. I find the white dogs probably the most challenging for me really because you have a lot more layering to do and you've got to be a lot more careful with your values and what have you and not going too light too quickly otherwise you'll just lose your highlights and what have you so I find white dogs to be a lot more challenging than black dogs. It's just a case of applying your darks and then just working up gradually to your highlights and you can just add whatever colours you want along the way. And I find that they almost paint themselves really, compared to light coloured dogs, which take a lot longer for me to do anyway. working on this fourth study and this is another chilled out on a walk study so to put them like diagonal to each other so on the other side the the chilled on a walk study were in the bottom corner and this is one's in top corner and same for agility studies so the last study is going to be another agility study but anyway I enjoyed this one because the dog's sitting on a bit of a mound with some mosses and twigs and logs and things like that going on and I always find them really satisfying to paint and I apologise for me I'd keep getting it way but with it being a large painting it was quite difficult to set the camera up because I've, I've really really not got much room at all so it was difficult to set the camera up in a way that it could get a good view of painting but we aren't being you know the me had been in the, the line of the of the camera lens to the actual image so me head keeps getting up in way a little bit and I'm not sure what to do about it. We are putting the camera further to the side and then the view of painting would be a lot more front side rather than straight on so it would be a lot more skew whiff if you know what I mean. And I just can't set the camera further back or do else. I'm not sure else what I can do to stop it from happening. I keep trying to remember not to put my head forward but it's really difficult when you get into, you know, groove at paint and you're just working on it and you forget all this stuff. So yeah, my head does get in weight a little bit. I've tried messing around, to tilting the drawing board and, and moving it around and things like that, see if that'll work. So I'm still working on that one. So I'm now on last study and it's another agility one as I mentioned earlier and I enjoyed doing the fur texture on this one because he's jumping his fur sort of flying around and what have you so you've got a lot of interesting textures and what have you going on with your coats flowing in different directions and that kind of thing. So I'm just finishing this one off now and then I've got 
the signature to add to painting and then there's a final reveal. If anybody has any suggestions on making the panning shots a little bit more smooth and less jittery in the final reveals then please share them in comments. <laughs> Meanwhile I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have then please give me a like and any comments at all are really appreciated as long as they're nice and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.